Originally, when I was doing this video, I was going to do a full, you know, voiceover narration for it. But then I got to thinking that, you know, a lot of the steps that I'm taking here pretty much explain themselves. So I don't have to, you know, be rambling on about the obvious stuff that's taking place. But I will jump in every once in a while and give a little bit of an explanation about things that may not be too clear. I'm making the blade and the other steel parts from a worn out circular saw blade. I already tested the steel to make sure it could be hardened. The way I did that was I cut a small piece off, heated it up with my torch and then quenched it in oil to cool it quickly. And after that was brittle, I could break it with my fingers. I recently made a wooden knife exactly like this. I used exactly the same template. And if you want a little bit more explanation about, you know, the steps involved in putting a knife together like this, you should watch that video because I did do a full narration on that one. The link to that video is in the description. This tab on the end is there so that I can grab it with the pliers while I'm heat treating it. I guess you could say this is the fun part, but it's also kind of scary because I put so much work into shaping the blade. If something happens to it, you know, while I'm hardening it, if it cracks or anything like that, I just got to throw all that away. But luckily, nothing bad happened. After the blade was hardened, I tempered it in my kitchen oven. I put it on 400 degrees Fahrenheit and left it in there for about 20 minutes. For the handle scales of the knife, I'm using 1 8 inch thick aluminum. This stuff is pretty soft and really not a good choice for the material. Although it's easy to work, it does, you know, mark up very quickly and won't hold the polish very well. I did most of the knife using just hand tools, like a coping saw to cut out the aluminum, the angle grinder to cut the steel, and usually a hand drill just to drill the holes. Of course, if you have more sophisticated tools, you could use those as well. I'm gluing the two handle scales together so that I can machine them both at the same time and they'll be exactly the same. The holes will be in the same place.
The pivot holes in the spine lock and the blade are one eighth of an inch. I drilled the holes in the handle scales a little bit smaller than that so that I could use these nails as pins. The idea for the smaller hole is that I'll drive the nail in and then the hole widen out to fit the nail precisely. And then I can just file off the burr that pushed out on the other side. Rather than use the template for the spine lock pivot, I'm using the spine lock itself lined up with the blade to mark that hole. I added two pins that are not shown in the template, but they hold the piece that holds the spring in. I very carefully cut out the spring from that same circular saw blade, and I was interested to see that it was actually really springy enough for what I wanted to do. I thought I would have to harden it and then temper it back so that it would, you know, be more springy, but it works great just the way it is. Half of the work here is to check to make sure everything lines up properly. So after each step, I, you know, checking everything over. I'm using those nails for pins and I'm going to cut them off a little long. Then I'll put them in and I want to grind them down until they're just a bit proud of the surface of the handle scale. What I wanted to do is peen them down so that they'll lock onto the handles. You see those razor blades are shims actually so that as I peen down the pins it doesn't close tight on the blade or the spine lock. You really need to leave enough space there for those two things to operate correctly. I didn't use the razor blade shims on the butt because I want that to go together tight. Then after I've got it together, I'll check it out again to make sure everything looks right. Although at this point, there's not a lot I can do about it. After it first goes together, it looks kind of ugly, kind of beat up. Uh, but you know what you have ahead of you is a lot of sanding and shaping to get it looking perfect. I didn't really go overboard with it, but what I did do was give the handle scales a bit of a polish on the buffing wheel just to make them, you know, look better in the pictures. Anyway, a fun project, uh, both the metal one and the wooden one that I did before. If you want uh, to try to make this knife, you can get the template on my website. The link is in the description. Once again, I recommend that you go look at the other video. It's a lot more detailed. I did a lot more talking in that one. Even though I'm making the knife out of wood in that one, most of the steps are the same in the metal version, except for the pins, how the pins go in, and peening those. That's a little bit tricky, and it does take a little bit of practice.